Hi, it's JFK assassination researcher Richard Hook. And uh, what I did is uh, I watched uh, a video movie recently, uh, JFK, uh, The Smoking Gun. Uh, it's about the investigation of Colin McLaren of Australia in 2013, which is based on the theory of Howard Donahue, who was in 1977, his theory, and subsequent book, Mor Mortal Error, uh, by Bonner Menninger in 1992, that named um, Secret Service agent uh, George Hickey as the second shooter of, of JFK. Uh, in addition to in addition to Oswald, and uh, it claims uh, Donahue claimed that Hickey accidentally shot JFK uh, in the head from the car behind JFK uh, with his AR-15 assault rifle. <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting theory, um, and especially now. Uh, uh, after 43 years uh, have passed since uh, Donahue, pro Donahue proposed it, um, it occurred to me it might be a useful exercise uh, to go over uh, Donahue's theory and uh, explain it and see uh, what new, uh, new insights we can come up with. So this is probably going to be a, a, a two-part video. So this will be part one. Um, now, uh, Donahue's uh, uh, Secret Service agent Hickey theory was first proposed in 1977, and it stays pretty much within the parameters of the Warren Commission, um, that Oswald was a lone nut, uh, that three shots only were fired uh, from the rear, and it also employs Arlen Specter's magic bullet theory uh, with, within it. Um, and the only difference is Donahue's contention that Secret Service agent Hickey accidentally fired the third shot from the follow-up car with his AR-15 assault rifle into JFK's head, and the Secret Service um, was complicit in the cover-up. Although Donahue, Donahue, a lot of people don't realize, what he was proposing is that Hickey accidentally slipped and um, the gun went off and shot JFK in the head, in the rear of the head. And so then the Secret Service um, decided to cover that up right then, but it wasn't, uh, they didn't premeditate covering that up ahead of time. It was just kind of a uh, thing that they, they winged it at the, at the time, okay? This is what Donahue was saying. Uh, the book, uh, Mortal Air by Menninger containing this theory came out in 1992, about the time researcher William Cooper was saying the Secret Service agent driver William Greer shot JFK in the head, and James Files' uh, book has also come out in the early 90s, James Files' Mafia CIA, who, who claimed he fired the final headshot from the grassy knoll. Uh, thus, Howard Donahue's theory that Hickey shot JFK in the head was the only theory still claiming Oswald was a lone nut assassin and SSA Hickey accidentally fired the final kill shot and the Secret Service conveniently covered it up. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, now the Secret Service agent uh, Hickey theory put forth by Donahue, what it actually claims is there were only two shooters, Oswald and Hickey, and just three shots. And the three shots that uh, Donahue claimed were the first one uh, from Oswald from the sniper's nest ricocheted off the street and hit JFK, who said, I am hit. <laughs> it just, he, he claimed that the first shot that hit the street ricocheted and hit JFK and he doesn't even say where, it doesn't use any of the known wounds. He, he, Donahue doesn't say where it hit JFK. He just says it hit him and it caused him to say, I am hit. Then Donahue's second shot was from Oswald also, uh, according to him. And this is where he, he, he utilized uh, the preposterous magic bullet uh, theory 
of Arlen Specter shot to JFK's upper back, um, out, out the throat, turned right, and then went into Conley's uh, right back and uh, into Conley's right wrist and left thigh. Uh, so Donahue's second shot proposes that, that was done by all that, did all that from Oswald. And then the third shot he proposes was from Hickey in the follow-up car with the assault rifle, rose up and then fell backward accidentally firing into JFK's head. So viewing Howard Donahue's theory from 2020, 43 years after it was proposed, because of personal computer technology, we now know Oswald fired no shots at all because Oswald bailed just prior to the shooting, placed two spent cartridges down below the window and went down into the first floor doorway. So the actual TSBD 6-4 shooters were Loy Factor and Mac Wallace firing from the opposite end of the sixth floor from the vacated sniper's nest that Oswald had vacated just a minute or two before the shooting. He, he bailed and Wallace went to the opposite end and Oswald came down in the doorway. Um, this is what we know um, in 2020 with uh, modern computer technology. We've, we've proved it. Okay, so then how do we explain Donahue's first two shots that he had attributed to Oswald, which, which that can't be correct, okay? Now, the first shot uh, that was heard was approximately, approximately Z-155, it's a Pruder frame 155. Uh, it sparked off Elm Street, uh, was actually fired by Loy Factor, who did not want to shoot JFK, and JFK was not hit by it at all, or, or, or any ricochet. I, I, I don't believe that it, it, it hit uh, on the south side of Elm Street over the car. So the odds that a, a, shot, a, a fragment could have gone back into JFK, it didn't happen. Actually, that shot, in my opinion, ricocheted down and cut James Tag in the cheek by a triple underpass. But it didn't hit JFK. Okay, so the first shot sparked the street from Moist Factor, and nobody was hit. And actually, we can see in Zapruder frame uh, 183, you can check it out, JFK still smiling and waving at the grassy knoll um, in Z183. So uh, he wasn't hit by any, uh, any ricochet from the fir first shot, and it wasn't from Oswald. Okay, now the second shot, uh, approximately uh, Zapruder frame 202 to 210. Uh, the next shot was fired into JFK's back by Mac Wallace, and JFK then said, I'm hit. And his, his arms came up, uh, not all the way up, but they came partially the way up. They weren't grasping at his throat yet, but his arms came up. Uh, the, the shot from Wallace came down at a downward angle uh, from the west end of the TSBD, opposite of the snipe, sniper's desk, slime, slammed into JFK's spine and stopped right there. It came down at an angle and stopped against his spine is what happened. Uh, and actually, CIA agent Hugh Huggins, who was at the Bethesda autopsy, uh, stuck his little finger into the back wound of JFK and uh, Huggins said uh, it stopped right there by the spine. He, he stuck his little little finger into the wound. Okay, so the first those are the first two shots uh, of what we discovered in 2020. Or what we discovered in 2020, uh, and they weren't from Oswald. Now the third shot. Uh, now actually, the sequence of um, the magic bullet was a number, of, uh, a number of shots and shooters. Now, the third shot, approximately when he was behind the freeway sign, 202 to 210, was fired by Roscoe White from behind the picket fence on the upper grassy knoll, through the sign and into the front of JFK's throat. That was described as a frontal wound of entry by Dr. Crenshaw at Park Parkland Hospital, and a bullet was recovered having tumbled down into JFK's chest 
at Bethesda, noted by CIA agent Huggins also. So the, the throat wound was a frontal wound. <laughs> so the, the magic bullet theory uh, was bullshit by Arlen Specter. He just connected everything together to uh, make it so it would only be three shots. But anyway, the, the third shot was from Roscoe into the throat. The fourth shot was fired by Mac Wallace at a downward angle into John Conley's right back. This is approximately Z-235, it's a Pruder frame 235, exiting his chest, uh, went into his right back and exited his chest, uh, went, went through his right wrist and into his left thigh. The fragments remaining in Conley's body were never completely submitted as evidence. Uh, and, and now we also know that the so-called pristine magic bullet uh, they, that they said was found on a stretcher at Parkland was actually a pointed tip, short-range type bullet. It wasn't a Carcano bullet at all, okay? Uh, it had nothing to do with, the sh with these shots and more than likely was fired at extremely short range from Jackie Kennedy's palm pistol. That was the bullet found on the stretcher. But after it was turned in uh, to Parkland security and given to the Secret Service, it was switched to a Carcano bullet to frame Oswald. That's the story there. Okay, so now we've been through the, the first four shots looking at it from 2020. Uh, so th that's the second shot attributed Howard, Howard, by Howard Donahue to Oswald was actually composed of three shots by two gunmen, Roscoe White and Mac Wallace. Wallace was using a non-bolt action rifle so he could get off those two shots to JFK's back and Conley's back, separate shots, and Roscoe White fired the shot into the front of JFK's throat from a Mauser rifle. And again, the first shot into the street was fired by Loy Factor. So, before the headshots, had even happened, had he, any headshots, before the headshots had even occurred, we already had at least four shots done by three different gunmen, none of which were Lee Harvey Oswald. So uh, that'll be the end of part one, and I'll see you uh, in part two in just a little bit. Thank you.